Let it go. Best quarterback in the league, man. Stop playing with him. Likely in motion. He bubbles it. Scoops it in. Vacuums it home. Here comes Hubbard. Oh, he threw him away like a rat. Ravens flock, the flock run down is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock run down. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. What a win, man. What a win. Ravens win 41-38 over the Bengals in overtime in Cincinnati. Bengals' backs were against the wall, and they played like it. I mean, they slowed down the run for most of the game. They just absolutely torched our secondary but the Ravens found a way in a game that I feel like the Ravens usually wouldn't win this type of game. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but all game I'm watching this and I'm like, this just ain't it, man. The secondary can't stop a nosebleed. Team wasn't playing complimentary ball. You know, the, the, the Ravens would zip down the field and score. Defense would let up a quick touchdown. Or the defense would finally get a stop early and then the Ravens would go three and out. But they found a way, man. Shout out Marlon Humphrey getting that interception at the end of the game when the Bengals were going to kick a field goal. Or run the clock out if they could continue the drive but he got an interception Ravens go down Tucker bangs a 56 yard draw shot so much for him not being back so much for Mark Andrews not being back who had a big second half I know his stat line's not crazy but he made some critical catches in that second half I could feel the pressure on a Mark Andrews performance building up as he just disappeared again in the first half but he had some big catches in that second half Lamar made some big throws on a day where Lamar was a bit inaccurate in moments I mean overall obviously we're gonna look at this game and Lamar did his thing you know he he was the MVP today we didn't have the run game in this game to rely on like we thought we were we were going against a Bengals front who had struggled every week against the run a team whose defensive line was looking pretty soft in their first four games really showed up against the Ravens offensive line today. So shout out to the Bengals defensive line. That was an area I thought we could really exploit in this game and ended up being the exact opposite. They were stacking the box. They were being more aggressive in winning that trenches battle, especially in the run game. But Lamar Jackson found a way to find his guys, Zay Flowers, all the tight ends, likely Kohler, Andrews. Bateman had some huge catches. I mean, everybody pretty much got involved. Tylen Wallace had some big conversions. I thought that this was a complete team game. They found a way. Lamar Jackson took over. The defense got just enough stops in this game in a secondary performance that was abysmal, to be honest with you. I, I definitely want to celebrate this win. I'm excited about this win. But Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins ate our secondary up. The corners were just losing a lot of battles to these really talented receivers. That's what it came down to at the end of the day, and Joe Burrow was locked in. <laughs> it's an insane game. The Ravens had to go completely opposite script, so so much for not being able to pass or not testing our pass game. We had to play from behind the whole second half and consistently come back every time that the Ravens offense would score, the Bengals would match it. And then when we did get to overtime, driving to win the game, Lamar Jackson Jackson takes his eyes off the snap, drops the snap. Bengals are in field goal range. I'm like, man, we came all the way back for us to go out like this. And then that Cincinnati holder had a bad hold, shanked kick left. Derrick Henry all the way down to the red zone. Justin Tucker finishes it again, man. Just an incredible win. The Ravens are now 3-2, and two, and the Bengals are 1-4. and four. This was just a huge flip in the division, uh, opportunity for us to get some distance and we're on a three-game win streak, man. Let's dive into some of these stats. This was an insane statistical game. Lamar Jackson, 26 of 42, 348 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked once. On the ground, Derrick Henry, 
15 of 92. A lot of that was that late big run. He really didn't have a big run until then. He also got his score. So shout out to Derrick Henry. He passed 10,000 career rushing yards in this game and got 100 touchdowns. So big game for him. Lamar Jackson added 12 carries for 55 on the ground. Justice Hill, 5 for 17. And then in the receiving department, Zay Flowers led the way, seven catches, 111 yards, huge breakout game for him in this entire pass game, man. We needed to rely on it, and it came through. Charlie Kohler, three for 64 and a touchdown. Rashad Bateman, four for 58 and a touchdown. Mark Andrews, four for 55. He should have had a touchdown. Lamar missed him wide open. He could have just walked in, but it was an underthrown ball, so Mark had to kind of drop and catch it. But Mark should have scored in this game. Tylen Wallace added two for 31. Isaiah Likely, three for 13. Two touchdowns for him. And then the Ravens defense, Roquan Smith led the way. 14 total tackles. Insane game. Brandon Stevens, nine tackles. Marcus Williams, not such a great game, but he did have six tackles. But we'll we'll dive into all the secondary's mistakes and kind of attack the specifics of this game when the film comes out over these next few days this is definitely my instant reaction to this game and these are always kind of a fun celebratory episode if we win or a bunch of complaining and uh, misery if we lose which I really thought this game might be but I gotta have a little bit more faith man we pulled this one out three games in a row back to the stats we got a sack from Kyle Hamilton a sack from Namde Matabike and a sack from Tavius Robinson. That Namdi Matabike sack was huge too because it stopped the Bengals really from being aggressive on that final drive to try and go kick a game-winning field goal and they basically just sent it to overtime. I'm just happy we found a way to win, man. It, we need to celebrate the fact that we're 3-2 and two and that we just won a game from behind and through the air on the backs of Lamar Jackson. I'm not surprised that he got it done, but we really had to go through the air. I mean, the Bengals slowed down our run game. Our line was not creating holes. Derrick Henry was getting stuffed at the line of scrimmage again. Everything that we've been seeing the last two weeks with the run game was pretty much gone until overtime on that final that final big run by Derrick Henry. But other than that, the run game was not to be relied on today. The Bengals were bringing everyone to the line of scrimmage, running a lot of cover zero. But we were able to attack them downfield. We were able to attack them through the air. Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, utilizing all the tight ends. These are all the things that we've been talking about, that the Ravens' offense can be this multiple. And the Bengals kind of forced our hand to show that we can be multiple because we weren't able to just consistently hand it off to Derrick Henry. I wish it would have went that way. This game would have been a lot less stressful. We would have been able to control the clock, you know, hopefully give our defense some rest so that they weren't just getting destroyed like that. I don't know how much of a difference that would have made. It seemed like the defense just wasn't winning their matchups today, really. I mean, Chase and Higgins are are tough covers. Like I said in the pregame episode, the Bengals receivers are not the Bills receivers. We could not play the same way that we played against Keon Coleman and Shakir because leaving a lot of one-on-one matchups everywhere, having them spread us out, Chase and Higgins are winning their battles. They're better than our corners. Our secondary is stacked on paper, and it is really, really good. We have a ton of talent, but we don't have a guy that's just going to shut Jamar Chase down in a one-on-one -on -one matchup consistently. And we've seen teams with elite, talented receivers all season long pretty much eat us up. So it happened again today. But the change today was that we won, and we won in a style that I feel like we usually don't win these style of games. You know, I wasn't surprised that Lamar and the offense were fighting. They went up tempo, they were coming back. That wasn't a big shocker to me. But when the defense is consistently letting up touchdown after touchdown drive and our offense has to match it every single time, those are usually the games that we just make a mistake or something doesn't go our way. And it almost happened, man. The Lamar Jackson fumble, it almost happened. But that missed field goal is an example of something that does go our way in a situation like that that I feel like just never does go our way. It's the type of game that gets those Lamar Jackson MVP conversations rearing back up too. I don't really care if he wins MVP. I mean, it'd be cool for sure but goal number one priority number one is to win a Lombardi for sure Lamar's already had two MVPs but winning games like this will get everyone kind of talking about Lamar Jackson for MVP again because that was an MVP performance and I don't want to take anything away from Joe Burrow because he also had an MVP performance today you know I outside of that interception at the end of the game but Lamar Jackson dropped a snap too so it's not like 
both of them didn't make a mistake in a crucial moment. I feel like they both made one crucial mistake, but they also both kept their teams driving up and down the field and scoring touchdowns over and over again. So huge game from Lamar, big game from Burrow too. I just feel like Lamar is going to be kind of back in that front runner for MVP. Would be super cool for him to win back-to-back MVPs. That usually doesn't happen. They try to give it to somebody else. But Lamar is very deserving of that at the moment. I'm just glad we got this win. I'm glad we've won three straight. We got to keep this train rolling. I feel like we can next week against the Commanders who are playing great ball but don't have quite as many elite receivers that we have to deal with in in that situation. So we might be able to contain them a little bit better. What really scares me is going against these elite passing offenses like the Bengals because we just really can't. We can't man up against these receivers, man. They they beat us. Higgins and Chase beat our corners. So I don't think we're going to run into a ton of those teams. There's not a lot of teams with that dominant of a receiving core with that good of a quarterback. But when it does happen, I am worried. But let me know what you guys thought about this game. What did I miss talking about that you want to point out? I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Enjoy this one. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense, can't tame the untamed.